evening. It's Memorial Day. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sean. How are you doing tonight? Thrilled to be here. We've got an exquisite topic. The topic tonight is healthy anger. This is part two, part dos. And uh, last week we deeply dived into understanding anger in a way we've never had before. I'm hoping you had some ahas. And I think you're going to get some ahas tonight, too. I know I sure have. Do you ever notice that, like, when you focus on something, like, say, you figure out you're going to buy a car and you see the car freaking everywhere. You just see it everywhere. Well, with this focus on anger, I have never been more angry. <laughs> I'm getting so many messages from people saying, wow, when's the anger, you know, lecture? I am so mad. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can so relate. Because when you start making the unconscious conscious, making the unconscious conscious. You see it everywhere. So I have been diving deep personally into this conversation of anger and I've learned so much and I've apologized a lot. It's particularly with my husband. Um, I've discovered through a lot of the research that I've done too, and it makes sense even for me personally, that the people you tend to be angry with more are those that are closest to you. And because anger is about a dance of intimacy. So I see you guys are showing up. I'm going to do a few commercials. Hey, everybody, I see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'll come into the, the comments here in just a second. Let me do my usual commercials and all that before we get started. This first commercial is free, and I think you might be very interested in it. I have a dear friend. His name is Gary Stewart, along with another gal named Jill Fisher, and they do something called Family Constellations. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. I wrote down a couple of descriptions um, family constellations typically take place in a workshop, and this, in this case, it's a Zoom workshop, and it's free. And it's a made of made up of people who don't know each other; they're not related. And members of the group stand in for family members of the person or couple that they're representing and presenting a difficulty or a concern. And it's therapy based. Um, it's based in the idea that problems sift down through generations. I really believe that. I see the patterns in my family system. I see the patterns with my kids. I see the patterns from my parents. I mean, we pass down everything, right? And, um, and when we examine our perceptions and our feelings in, this, in the field, it's called the field, you can actually, actually break family patterns. And I'm a huge advocate of family constellations. I've been doing them for years. I probably had the most breakthroughs with my mother by, by participating in these workshops. And um, it's a very different kind of experience. It's not for everybody. It is not for everybody. It's non-religious. It's more therapy-based. And um, what I'm gonna do, and it happens Wednesday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern and there's a Zoom for it. I'll put up the links if that's something you're interested in. I believe they will get full because he's, it's a free free one. And uh, if you wanna check it out, I highly recommend it, especially if you come from any dysfunction in your family background. You, it's, it's, Gary uses the phrase, making the unconscious conscious all the time. And that's one of the reasons I fell in love with him because I think there's so much power in making the unconscious conscious. And that's what tonight is all about too becoming more conscious of this phenomenon called anger. And um, so Family Constellations, huge proponent. I probably myself, I've probably done over 100 of them myself in the last eight years. I do them all the time. So I highly recommend, I'll put that info up. Okay, I also wanna shout out our partners over at Understanding Compassion, Randy Harris. Randy is a dear, dear friend of mine. And he's been sharing Project Forgive since we probably since we started, you know, we became fast friends. He's based in Japan right now. He's been stuck in Hawaii. <laughs> we laugh about that. And uh, his he's all about compassion, and he's all about compassion around race, which is one of the things I love about him. Um, so if you get a chance to check out his page, please do so. Also, I'm giving away prizes every Monday night. I give away prizes. There's a way that I usually do the prizes by the end of the talk. I usually go 20, 25 minutes. It might be more like 35 tonight because I got some good material because I'm interested in this topic. And um, you're going to win some prizes. And here is one of the prizes you're going to win tonight. These are brand new, you guys. I'm so excited. They are there are forgiveness blend of essential oils. Here, let me see if you can see it. It's got, they have little um, charms on it, forgiveness charm and a dove charm. It's so exquisite. We had it specially made for us out of Chicago. 
Everything is 100% organic, therapeutic. It's got sage and it. it's got lavender in it, eucalyptus. The blend is exquisite. And if you're into essential oils, you're gonna love this. Someone's gonna win this tonight and we're gonna throw in a mask as a bonus gift. We, some of us still have to wear masks and in some instances we have to wear them. And we have our kindness is contagious mask. We have white ones and black ones. And uh, I'm gonna, whoever wins tonight, I'll let you pick white or black and you'll get a mask and our forgiveness oil. I know, the essential oils are so cool. I see you guys are, are showing up, making comments. And this, hopefully we'll have it in our store tomorrow. Please check out our store. Um, the, the price is gonna be $27 with shipping. So you don't, it's free shipping. So it's gonna be 27 bucks, which is actually freaking cheap. And you will get a mask with it as a bonus gift while supplies last because it's, you know, we're gonna start rolling down and subsiding, doing the masks as things evolve here. So uh, the oil is exquisite. And um, yeah, that's what there is to say about that. Oh, what else I got? Um, if you're new to us, tell us. And uh, cause we wanna welcome you because our community is so exquisite. We, also giving stars, mwah, thank you for the stars. We appreciate them. Our workshops, um, which I'll mention a little bit later when I'm in one of the benefits and one of the things you can do around tips and tools for anger, is one of our tools called Accept the Apology You'll Never Receive. It is a phenomenal tool, and we're going to be doing monthly workshops. Doing that activity, it's, there'll be an hour long, 45 minutes to an hour long Zooms. I think we're going to charge $7. If you cannot afford $7, we are gonna use our stars and that kind of stuff to, we, cause we aren't gonna turn anyone away because of money, it's just not an option. So uh, yeah, so the stars really make a difference for us. Well, hey Lynn, welcome. People are already loving you up. Oh, you're new too, Stephanie, welcome. Let me just see what people are saying. Let me say hi to folks before we get jump, dive into this material. Oh, hey jo Joan, you're gonna love the topic I'm picking next week. You were the one that set that topic, I'll tell you soon. Hi Barbara, I see you guys. Hi, Brenda, Annette, Lavetta, Jeannie, hey, good evening, Sandra, I just love Sandra, hi, Amanda, wonderful, I see you guys are saying, hey, you're saying hi to everybody, perfect, if there's weird people saying stuff, be my friend, ignore them, just, here, let me get a Kleenex real quick, just forgive them and forgive their trespasses, however you want to do it, and say, oh, they don't know any better, because they're doing it from another country, sometimes Ukraine, sometimes Russia, and they do it because they get paid to do it with these bots. So just pay no attention to them. Don't even engage with them, whatever, right? Okay. All right, it's all right, so good, all right, I'm gonna keep going. Other thing too, we do have a Facebook group that's a joy is a habit. Um, whatever you focus on expands. You're focusing on your anger, you're, it's gonna come up like barnacles on a boat that are stuck. And I love that feeling of cleaning up stuff and getting stuff out of my body and out of my system. And I wanna replace it with things like joy. So that's one of the reasons why we have Joy is a Habit um, Facebook group. So I'll put a link up there if you're inspired. We're very focused on joy. Also, we're getting ready. We're going back out in the world. We do training for a living. And we do a lot of trainings around respect and inclusion, forgiveness in the workplace. General Motors is one of our biggest sponsors around those topics, around forgiveness at work. All non-religious, all non-partisan. It's really about deeply connecting. So, if you work at a company that brings in exquisite speakers, whether it's Zoom, virtual, or if it's live and in person, we do that, and we love to do that. Um, I think that's it. Okay. So, how I thought I'd start tonight. Okay, I'm going to go through some of the stuff, and then I'll come back in. Thank you, Sandra. Um, Beliefs. One of my favorite people is a guy named Randy Gage. He's in our movie. That's going to be, we don't have a date set yet, but we're hoping for this year. And uh, Randy Gage talks a lot about our belief systems. Let me write his name down because I want you to access some, that, something that interests you. I love him because he always challenges me. I need a piece of paper. Sorry. And he challenges my belief systems all the time. And just because he challenges me doesn't mean I agree with him because I probably agree with him 50% of the time, you know? And, um, but he's the one that has me critically think about my belief systems. So I, and so I'm like, this reminded me when I saw these belief systems, we have our own anger. I thought I'd start with that tonight. And it was a Dr. Stan Hyman. He's a researcher and academic, which I am. So I love academia. And, um, and what the question he can, he pondered and posited, posited is what do you believe about anger? What are your beliefs about anger? And here's a couple. 
Um, sometimes we believe that anger is a natural reaction to fear, pain, or stress, and that it's simply a way to defend or protect ourselves. Could be, could not be true. Often we believe anger creates action. Um, like sometimes we use anger to manipulate people, to bully them, to reach a desired end. Have you ever used anger to command respect or instill fear, especially with our kids? You better go do that right now. Ironically, it doesn't work. We think it works, but it does not work. And some of us believe that anger is irrational, unproductive, or even a bad response. That's not true either. And we try to eliminate anger altogether, like never have angry feelings. And unfortunately, this contradicts what many therapists, psychologists, and academics say is true, that anger is necessary and beneficial. So we couldn't rem remove anger even, we, couldn't re we shouldn't remove anger even if we could, because it's a very healthy thing. And that's what last week was all about, like what are those benefits of anger? Why do we need it? And I, like I said, I'll be sure to put up the link for that. And then there's also those who, of us that believe that it's best or easier to hide our anger. No, 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 no. When we have no idea how to control our anger or are discomforted or exhausted by it, we pretend it isn't there. And here's the thing, if you aren't careful, it's gonna to lead to all those three things that I talked about last week with passive aggression, indirect, prolonged ways of getting even. There is no hot dog down that frickin' hole. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna to come to the notes in just a second. I'm gonna share these three myths that Dr. Stan also talked about that you should never hold anger inside. It's a myth. Actually, there are times when holding it in is totally appropriate. Um, and a really good idea. And if you skip the rant and slow, thing down, slow things down, that's when anger may subside. Like sometimes, you ever been in a store and the person that's waiting on you is just an idiot. They are a complete idiot. And there have been times when I've just run into rage. I'll give you an example. Here's a perfect example because I've been playing with anger this week. So our dishwasher broke, okay? I have a Lowe's for the first time in years, I bought a warranty, okay? My husband said, oh, let's buy the warranty because we've had bad luck with dishwashers. So I, we bought the warranty. I think we paid 130 bucks for it. It's for five years. So I'm like, okay, this will be easy. Nothing's working on the dishwasher. So I call Lowe's. I kid you not, Lowe's is going to be disappointed that I'm sharing this with tens of thousands of people. I was on hold for two freaking hours. Two hours. And the longer I was on hold, the angrier I was getting. Could you relate? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So this would be one of those times where I want to hold my anger inside and, and soothe myself because the customer service person that gets on the phone, they are, um, they don't know you waited for two hours. They are just trying to help you, okay? And you do catch a lot more bees with, with honey, flies with honey than you do, you know, you know what I mean. And so ranting at this person is never a good idea. So I'm managing my anger, managing the anger. And what I did, and I practiced, okay? Uh, as soon as she got on the phone, and she was so sweet, I said, I would be remiss. And this was the smoothest, calmest I've ever been when I was really angry. And I said, I am deeply disappointed that I've been on hold for two hours. Because I'm thinking to myself, if I say this in the recording, if they ever do listen to the stupid records, which they probably don't, I just felt better. <laughs> but I didn't blast her. Got it? I am so disappointed that I waited on the phone for two hours. Okay? And, um, and the only reason I was calling them back is because they changed the appointment. My husband had already set the appointment. And... Then they changed it to this week, Friday. So my, I've been washing dishes by hand and I've been practicing managing my anger while I'm washing dishes with my husband or by myself or whatever, okay? So that's a perfect example. Sometimes you do hold your anger inside because that's a maturity conversation. Are you, like, you know, the things I ask myself, are you four years old and you're gonna throw a temper tantrum because you waited on the phone for, four, for two hours? No, I'm a 57-year-old adult woman. Got it? I'm a 57-year-old adult woman. If I were four, I can throw a temper tantrum. And I'm not four, right? So that's a maturity, making the, the unconscious conscious conversation. That's one of the benefits of reading all this stuff around anger. And um, here's another myth. There's three of them. First one is you should never hold your anger inside. False. Sometimes you do hold your anger inside. 
Okay, number two, there are no healthy ways to express anger. Sometimes a strict childhood, I'm seeing people, things are, things are, are flying here through the, mess, the, through the comments and I'll go through them in one second. You know, maybe a, your faith system says no anger um, or a difficult past relationship, childhood, like I mentioned, feed into this idea and the expression of anger becomes bad or a character flaw. Um, anger expressed in ways that's, that um, are done appropriately uh, create connection, con connectivity, intimacy. Anger is so important. And communication is, my PhD is in communication. It's compromised um, as a healthy sense of emotional awareness over time if you're suppressing it and not using it in a powerful way. Now, number three, anger myth. Anger is impossible to control. <clears throat> it's a lie, it's a myth. This myth gives anger way too much power. I've given anger way too much power. Can you relate to this? Like, oh, don't get angry because you're gonna blow up. Well, if you manage your anger on a daily basis, you're not gonna blow up, right? You're gonna get angry appropriately in, in its intensity, which is what we talked about last week, in a way that serves those around us and serves us, okay? And I think about this, this whole concept of anger out. It's kind of like what we learned when we were kids watching cartoons. And if you're my age, you saw cartoons, Wile E. Coyote, and I'm um, trying to think of you, Somebody Sam, and uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the cartoon. If you think of one, throw it in the notes or throw it in the comments. Where we see the cartoon character, the face turns red and steam comes out of their head. We've been conditioned culturally that anger is very, very bad and that it's violent. And that's just not true. Um, so this myth that anger is impossible to control is a myth. You can't control it. It just takes practice, right? It just takes practice. Just like you control blurting out things that are inappropriate, telling the chubby woman she's chubby. You know, little, my little 10-year-old grandson will say, boy, she's really fat. And I'll say, yeah, that's, you know, that's probably a thought you want to keep in your head um, and manage that internally because it hurts people's feelings, right? Um, so, yeah, love that. Let's see what you guys are saying. Anything saying that I need to comment on? Yep, I'm with you, Maria, on holding it in and getting frustrated. Totally get it. And it kind of builds up where you want to kill people. Hey, Joe, what's shaking? <laughs> <laughs> Good, the great Sandra. That's funny. Let's see if anything's saying something that I need to pay attention to. Hi, Connie. I see you guys. Oh, Stephanie, I'm so with you. Yep. My mother terrified me too. One day you could say one thing to her one day and she was fine and loving. The next day she would just go off in a rage and you'd be like, oh my gosh, don't say that. And then you left, we were left as a kid. What's okay to say? And then that feeling of walking in eggshells, right? Totally get that. Perfect. Yep, I'm um, with you. Yep, Stephanie, I'm just reiterating that. Yeah, I'm with you, Anna. And Anna, this thing about your brother saying he's dead to you, he acts as though he never said it. I don't know if you've ever tried to have a conversation and it, you could just do accept the apology you'll never receive and just forgive him if you want to be in a deep relationship with him, right? And then maybe at some other point, you can have that conversation and really unpack it, right? Let's see. I'm with you, Penelope. So with you. Okay, so we got it. Anger's normal. It's healthy. We're still a little bit uncomfortable with it because we're never taught that culturally or in our family systems. And But when it gets out of control and turns destructive, that's when it causes problems, right? And also, you, do you know people that are like easily angered? That generally, what in what some psychologists would say, they have low tolerance for frustration, meaning simply that they feel that they should not be subjected to frustration, inconvenience, or annoyance. If you're four, it's perfect. That's where you are cognitively. As we grow and evolve and make the unconscious conscious, we have more capacity to internally manage frustration, fear, discomfort, all those things. So what triggers anger? And um, for those academics that pay attention, I'll put some of the references for the academia because I love that stuff. Um, an attitude of hostility, hostility, resentment, and suspiciousness can be related to increased anger. Well, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Other things that lead to anger or like extra anger is awfulizing, like or imagining a situation to be much worse than it is 
or to see it as bad as it can possibly be. And um, I, that's one thing that I'm really guilty of. Uh, another study about women that I thought was really interesting, this came from Thomas Smucker and Droppelman. It said, women found that, ang found that anger was most often triggered by violations of personal values, feelings of powerlessness, and disrespectful treatment. So it's usually a frustration that turns into anger, and when we tap into our anger that's rarely tapped into, we can explode like a hurricane. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I think that's good. Okay, so the game now is to how do you interrupt that anger cycle? Because if we've been doing it for years, it's going to take some training to unlearn it. We've learned it. Now we're going to unlearn it. And I really am seeing, at least for me, these last few weeks, is that anger really is a habit. And um, so how we react could simply be a habit. So I've got some ideas to interrupt it. Some you've heard of, some you've never heard of. So if some of them you've heard of before, let them be a reminder. Great. Okay. One of the first things I do when, as soon as I can feel the anger, whoosh up my body. I deeply breathe, not in my chest. I breathe in my diaphragm. So I like expand my stomach. Okay, Sean, here it comes. That's one thing you can do. And you might want to picture your breath coming from your gut. Something that else that works is slowly repeating a calm word or a phrase such as relax, take it easy. Mine is, this is the, what I use, this is what I've been using for the last two weeks. Because my anger has never been validated. My anger has never been validated. I'm sure many of you can relate to that because our parents didn't know how to do their anger and they had a hard time validating your anger. So when I'm really anger, angry, I'll say to myself, almost like I'm parenting myself, Aw, oh, Shawnee, your anger is so valid. It makes perfect sense that you are so ticked off sitting here for two hours waiting to get your darn dishwasher fixed. That makes perfect sense. It's perfectly valid, right? So that's another one. Um, anger thermometer. I've been playing with an anger thermometer. So when I get hooked, me and my husband call it being in the pinball machine. We're just bouncing off each other with anger. And he's like, eh, 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 like a pinball machine, right? You have no control. I look at this anger thermometer. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, where am I at on the anger scale? As soon as I name it, like I am at a freaking 10, I notice I start going down the thermometer, like acknowledging the thermometer actually reduces and soothes. It reduces the stress and soothes me to get back into my right mind, my grounded mind, my grounded adult self, rather than reacting like a four-year-old. And I don't say this facetiously, I think you guys know what I mean, like when you're acting petulant or acting very childlike, you're not in your best, you're not being your best self. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, correct? Let me know correct is good, okay? Yep, I'm with you, Casey. Most of us didn't experience that at all about parents um, validating anger. Imagery works, like visualizing something relaxing from either your memory or your imagination. And that real, I really like that one because one of the things that I do, well, I used to do when my, my mother's been dead now a year, and being with her every day was very stressful, um, very tumultuous relationship. And what I would, and I was very committed to loving her up and being with her. And I had this little garden that I created in my mind's eye. I can see it right now. I haven't used the garden since my mother passed. And um, for me, and please know, Project Forgive is non-religious, non-partisan. Sometimes my stuff will show up in here, and it's just simply my belief system. Whatever your belief system is, rock and freak and roll. And in my garden, and in, it's beautiful, it's cool, it's in the rainforest, and I go in and it's draped with all kinds of, um, I'm trying to think, not vines, but it's just very rainforesty. <laughs> for lack of a better term, and always sitting there, and I join him as Jesus. That works for me. So I sit and calm down with Jesus, okay? <laughs> That's me. Um, you could be something different. Yours could be a goddess. Yours could be a Native American healer. It could be Allah or Buddha or whomever. For me, it's Jesus, okay? And so that imagery has been helping these last couple weeks. You can already tell my eyes are tearing up because it soothes me. And, um, and I forgot about that as a resource. Okay, more. Um, progressive muscle relaxation. Here, let me do this. So I was in LA last week. This is just what emotions look like sometimes. It ain't that freaking deep. Um, 
So I was in LA visiting my son last week and we watched a TV show. I can't remember the name of the show. I got a text him and get the name of it. And it was so beautiful. And one of the things, this lady was from India. And one of the things she was teaching her son was about getting grounded when you're upset or whatever and to know that you're present. And she had you go into your hand. So she says like, go into your hand and feel the energy or the life force inside your hand. And I'm like, okay, I'll try it. Pretty much try anything once. And uh, I can feel it right now, just saying it. And so like inside my hand is tingling. And she said, let that tingling or let that feeling, let it go up your arm, let it go in your shoulders, your chest area, and let it expand through your body. And I've been practicing this and I really like it. So that's another option too, especially when you're in the thick of it. <clears throat> the other thing too is recognizing and avoiding triggers. Now, let me tell you what I mean. Since I've been focusing on anger these last two weeks, I've been freaking, freaking, freaking angry, okay? I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. And um, one of my triggers, this is very blunt might be too much information if it is just go blah, 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 blah. if i had my other hand free i put both my ears in okay um i'm an incest survivor i share that very openly and one of the abuses my stepdad my stepdad was my perpetrator um is what he would do is he would go defecate in our bathroom me and my sisters and make it really smelly and he would do it on purpose before we'd get up going to high school and we had three bathrooms in the house but he would specifically go in me and my sister's bathroom just before we're getting ready to go in the shower because he worked midnights or late at night and he'd get in like at three or four in the morning and we'd get up at 5.30. To, that was back when you'd blow dry your hair with a perm, if you remember those days. If not, if you never remember that, no worries. You don't even need to know. And um, it was the, so the smell of feces in a bathroom is a huge trigger for me. Like, Frickin' huge, okay? Um, sometimes it's more intense than others. I've gotten a lot of facility around that. Pardon me if that offends you. I don't mean it to. I'm just trying to be transparent about my triggers, being an incest survivor. And um, so what me and my husband do, which I love, and I learned from my girlfriend, Lynn, is whenever someone goes number two, we light a match in the bathroom because the sulfur deflates the, the smell. It goes pretty instant. Um, the bath bathroom by my bedroom is a little bit bigger, and I went in there, my husband had just gone to the bathroom, don't tell him I told you, okay? And it smelled so bad, I actually thought I was gonna be nauseous. I w and I was, it wasn't angry, I was enraged. The trigger was full blown in my body and it was bad, okay? And um, I was so angry and I was trying to like contain my anger to my husband and I could feel it seeping out. He didn't do anything wrong, you get it? I'm just triggered, okay? And after a couple of days, I was able to say, hey, I got an idea. I'm extra sensitive to the poop smells right now for whatever reason. And it, come, it goes in waves, okay? Anybody that gets triggers knows this, knows this conversation. And uh, I said, would you do me a favor if you happen to go number two in the big bathroom, would you do the matches over by the toilet and by the door? Because the bathroom's pretty big, okay? He's like, no problem. And what happens when you can soothe yourself in those triggers and recognize, like I am doing an avoidance technique so I don't walk into the bathroom and get hit with that and not expect it. Um, it's not to control the trigger, it's not to do any of that. I've done a lot of work around this, okay? Seriously, the reason I'm sharing this is because I know some of you experience this as well or face, it doesn't have to be poop smell in a bathroom. It could be something else. It doesn't matter. We all have, many of us have triggers if we've come from abuse. So that's one way that I, I'm recognizing and avoiding a trigger, okay? Another one is exercise. I'm not really good at that part yet. <laughs> I think that's, uh, I'm almost done through this list. So exercise, I'm thinking about exercise. <laughs> so it's progress, not perfection. Um, exercise really does uh, release pent up frustration, great. Other thing you can do is buy yourself some time. If you're really upset, this is about things you can do when you're really triggered in anger and really want to rage. Um, buy yourself some time. If I'm really upset with my husband, I'm just like, dude, I need to take a break. I don't want to say something I'm a regret. I'm, so, I'm just feeling so angry. I can't, I'm only seeing red right now. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Always have a return time, whether it's an hour, two hours. Oh, I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go do this. Let's talk about it in a little while, right? 
And um, one more thing, no, two more things. Volunteerism, it really works. I always avoided the conversation of like, volunteer your time or devote part of your time to someone, um, especially someone in need, because I always, years ago, 20 years ago, I always thought that was so codependent. And it's actually not. Um, a grown-up version of volunteering is allowing yourself to get out of your own crap, no pun intended, and, <laughs> and focus on someone else and something that brings you joy, right? Okay? So that's a very good thing. And of course, um, oh no, I lied. I got them out of order. Sorry. Oh, hydrate. Research shows, I know this, you've heard it before, drink water, drink water, drink water. Researchers from the University of Connecticut's Human Performance Laboratory found that even mild dehydration can cause anger and mood swings. Lack of water can cause anger and mood swings. So I've doubled up on the water. Um, but also notice words like never and always when talking about yourself and someone else. Those are big words that have big impact. And I've noticed, especially when you're in anger mode, you never put open do a match when you go in the bathroom. You always forget. You never take out the garbage. Never and always are such contemptuous words in any relationship. So start noticing how often you're saying them. You don't have to fix it. As soon as you start noticing, just like when you figure out the car you're gonna buy, you see it everywhere. When you say, hey, I'm gonna start paying attention to never and always in my vocabulary and in my communication, you will start noticing it and it'll start disappearing because you'll be more aware of it. That's a very good thing. Nothing to fix. Okay. And one more practicing forgiveness, of course. And of course, the tool of accepting the apology you'll never receive. That is a powerful tool. It's so powerful. Actually, we're shifting to at the end of this month, we'll put it, probably put it up in another week. We're going to be doing live workshops once a month, low cost, seven bucks. And, um, we're going to practice that tool because it's a phenomenal tool. And every month we'll pick a different topic. You, of course, you can work on everything you want to do. The reason I want to do the Zoom workshops is because this is great, okay? I say, I say stuff on here. I get a lot of messages from people telling me I'm crazy and all kinds of stuff. And I can imagine even the folks that sit here and say, you say, oh, my mother just died. And then you get a reply, hey, I love your post. Will you be my friend? I hate that crap. That's just so annoying. And it actually impinges on vulnerability and intimacy. So that's one of the reasons why I've decided to start some Zoom calls once a month on the apology you never received because it'll be a safe space. You won't have that going on anywhere. That's like not even an option. And um, yeah, the apology you'll never receive. Okay, we're almost there. They're almost there. I've got a few more things to say. Let's see if there's anything I need to pay attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm too. I'm looking forward to being with you, Sandra, too, on Zoom. Let's see. Oh, Michael's in the house. I love Michael. <laughs> Get it, Maria. Yeah, with you on the volunteering. Yep, I'm with you, Leah. So with you. Let's see. Anything? I'm just, pardon me. I'm just looking real quick to see if somebody said something. Yeah, thank you for that, Stephanie. You're precious. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. All right, Rini's going to try something. Love it. <laughs> Penelope, I'm with you. Let's see. Aw, thanks, Marianne. That touches my heart. Okay, almost there, and then someone's going to win a prize, okay? Yeah, Michael, the beginning's awesome, if I do say so myself. Okay, so problem solving. Anger is linked and tied to problem solving. This is the last piece I want to say. I knew this was going to go a little bit longer today because it feels valid and worthy. Um... I couldn't say enough about counseling, counseling, counseling. I'm a huge proponent of counseling. I even said it to my grandson two days ago um, about counseling that it's kind of like going to the plumber. Our family approaches it like when the toilet stopped up, didn't mean to have more toilet analogies, forgive. We call the plumber. And when the family system gets stuck, we call the plumber counselor. So I'm a huge proponent of counseling. Counselors can give you a third perspective to help problem solve. And um, I like, and many things do get solved, okay? Like, I'm a, some of you know this, I have many Emmys. I have six Emmys. I've been nominated close to, I think, 28 times. And after trying to win an Emmy 10 times and losing 10 times in a row, I was so ticked off. 
And I finally cried and said, okay, can I forgive myself? This was years ago. Can I forgive myself for not winning because obviously I'm doing something wrong? And as soon as I was able to cry, grieve, forgive myself for not being able to win, the solution started to come. So when you get underneath that anger, solutions really do start to come. I had ideas like, oh my gosh, let me get on an Emmy committee. What actually wins an Emmy? What wins? And I started to learn. And lo and behold, the next year I won my first Emmy. Okay. A lot of my Emmys are around racial justice, um, cancer, um, looking at doctors being human as, I mean, I've done documentaries where the doctors are crying because they're so sad that they lost a patient and how doctors are personally impacted by cancer. Did a lot on AIDS as well. Um, so the work that I do is it's really cool. I think it's cool and I wanted to win an Emmy. So it wasn't until I was able to forgive myself that the solution started to come. And here's what I wanna say about problem solving. Not every problem has a solution. That is a big aha idea. Not every problem has a solution and it's a practice of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Comfortable with being uncomfortable. And the example that always comes up for me is the Forrest Gump example, because a lot of people have seen Forrest Gump. When Jenny, who was an incest survivor, goes to her old house as a grown up with Forrest and she starts throwing rocks at the house, okay? It gives me goose pimples to even think about it. And Forrest says, um, sometimes there's not enough rocks. And what if that is the solution? That there is no solution, it's just a process. And when I think about this in terms of incest recovery, because I'm 57, I started doing incest recovery maybe when I was 21. Um, will it ever be solved? Will this problem ever be solved? Probably not. Does it get better? Do I get more facility? Absolutely. Will it ever be solved? Probably not. And I can be with that. And I'm hopefully, hoping that you can get to a place where you accept not everything is going to be solved, right? Okay, so a couple of things to question as we close. What's your habit? What's the habit? Is it timing? You know, if you're getting in fights with your spouse at the end of the night, when you discuss things that are really important, you get, perhaps it's time to change the time you do that. It's really that simple, right? And uh, maybe you don't, Talk about important matters at night when you're both tired and cranky. Something to talk about. The other habit can be avoidance in a good way. You know, if you have a teenager or a kid and their room is just horrific and you're furious every time you walk by that room, like furious, what if you just shut the door? Like that simple. Shut the door. That could be a solution for now and a habit to practice because you just accept that that's the way it is right now. Something to think about. Um, finding alternatives is another one. I know many of us are starting to commute again. Um, is there, some people, traffic just drives people freaking nuts, okay? Um, give yourself a project. Find a new map or a new way to get to work. Something that has beauty that might take you the same amount of time with rush hour traffic that's actually beautiful. There's always alternatives. Maybe your alternative is to take a bus or a commuter train, right? Yeah. Okay. The last thing I want to leave you with before I do prizes, okay, is I did find an anger management test that I thought was stellar. I took it, okay? And I'm, as I'm taking this test, I'm like, so many things are, are furious. Like, it could say, you know, not angry at all, a little bit angry. You know, we, I'll put the link up so you can check it out. It's from Psychology Today. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to say I'm a raging, psychotic lunatic at the end of this. Because I'm like, well, yeah, that makes me furious. <laughs> and I'm going through, but not all of them, Okay. And my results were is that I was normal. I'm like, wow, wow, this is normal. We have such a cultural construct or a cultural, cultural discourse around what anger is and what it isn't. And it gave me so much relief. I just loved the anger test. I thought it was great. So I'll put that up. Okay, next week, this is from you, Joan. We're going to do forgiving without reconciliation. Forgiving without being in relationship with them. What could that look like? What are your options? Um, we're going to explore that topic. I love that topic. I have people that I've forgiven that I haven't reconciled with at all. Like I'm done and I've forgiven them. 
and that power comes here. So forgiveness without reconciliation is next week, Monday. Now we're about to win a prize. For those that haven't heard at the top, we're giving away our brand new forgiveness essential oil, 100% therapeutic, organic. It's awesome. It smells delicious. My only request is that you give us some kind of review that you love it. Okay, so someone's getting this. And we're going to wrap it with a mask, too. Um, Kindness is contagious. Mask you and let me know if you want a black one or a white one. And those, this new product will be available. Hopefully it will be available this week. I, all the stuff goes to Hailey tomorrow, and it should be up tomorrow. So we're excited about it. And the cost, just so you know, if you do want to purchase it, it is $27 and includes free shipping. This is for the U.S. only. Um, I think we're putting on the website for uh, international shipping and it'll come with a mask as a bonus gift until we no longer have masks. So it's a steal of a deal, includes free shipping in the US. And um, our, our goal is to make things really cost effective that really support you. And um, the oil is fantastic. Okay, so someone's gonna win. This is how I'm gonna do. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. I, usually I say, and it's so not fair. Life is not freaking fair, okay? What I did before is that the first person to say something or put something in the post would win it. And it was according to my feed. So you could have been first in Stephanie's feed or Sandra's feed, but if you're not first in my feed, you don't win. So what I thought I would do is, here's what you're gonna do. It's the fifth person. The fifth person in my feed is gonna win this. So that gives more people a, a chance to win if you're a little slow like me. <laughs> okay, so the fifth person in my feed, in the US, you have to be in the US. I'm very sorry about that. It's cost prohibitive to mail these expensive gifts and pay for the shipping, okay, uh, out of the country. Um, so the fifth person in my feed um, is, oh, uh, thank you, Sandra, you're awesome is the fifth person to put in a heart. You could write heart, you could put a heart, you could put an ugly heart or a broken heart, I don't care. Fifth person in my feed to, that I see a heart is gonna win this prize. Must be in the US, sorry about that. So I'm looking for a fifth heart, it's gotta go in the comments. Luann is one. I'm waiting, number one, Luann is one. Sandra's two. Carolina is three. Rini is four. This next one is our winner. Joan, it's you. Joan Hammonds, you're our winner. Woohoo! <laughs> you're a double winner because you gave me the topic for next week. I really appreciate you. So, Joan, all you got to do, even if you've given us your address before, you could, every time you come, you can win as many times as you want every week. I don't care if you're the same winner every week. I love the chi of winning, it's so exquisite. Um, so, Joan. Make sure you message us with your address and your email so we can track the shipping and um, we'll get that out to you. Only me and Hailey can look at the messages so you're safe. Also, if you have a topic you wanna see in the lecture, make sure you put it in the messages. I, I freaking read them all, I really do. We get a lot and sometimes if the writing is really long, I, um, I will breeze through it. And um, so make sure you give us topics too, okay? And I'm hoping by the next, by next Monday, the workshop will be up because I think it looks like we're going to be doing them every once a month on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. or 7 p.m. We'll see what feels better. Um, but at the, at the last Wednesday of every month is when we're going to do them, okay? I love how people are congratulating you, Joan. That's so exquisite. Okay, long class tonight. Thanks for hanging out with it. Um, to me, this is in my life, this is most prevalent in my life right now, is really dealing with anger, especially coming through the pandemic and all that pent up emotion and just everything, the systemic racism, the politics. Oh my gosh, I don't care what side of the fence you are, it's so painful. All the election stuff is so painful. Everything is so painful. And uh, pent up, right? A lot of pent up emotion, frustration, upset, which usually manifests as anger. So you are so welcome. Love you guys. I will see you soon, okay? Oh, the biggest gift you can give us is share us. Whether you share this broadcast, share our posts. Folks like General Motors, Corteva AgriScience, they see the reach we have and the impact we have, and they sponsor us to do things. So when you share us, even if it's a poster that you just like, oh, that's such a great poster, share it. Just share it. It really makes a difference for us. Okay, big love. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Putting up the notes next.
บาย